Today I'm going to show you a new Lumira 2.0 designer application where I specifically will focus on the use cases for the interoperability with the discovery component as part of Lumira 2.0. My name is Ivor van der Zand, SAP Global Analytics. The dashboard that you see on the screen is a dashboard that focuses on product sales and displays a number of core KPIs important for this use case, being the budget performance, uh, color coded and depending on the value and the thresholds, the color changes. The second key important KPI is the forecast accuracy. We look at margin, again, all color coded and the unit sold performance. On the right hand side of the screen, you see some interactivity. I have different cities that roll up to countries and continents. Of course, we look at a specific range of years and we have two other key elements over here, the sales KPI, the absolute number in millions and also the forecast. On my left side of the screen, you see some board guidance, some messaging from the board of directors of this company indicating that a number of things need to be aligned and especially specifically looking for expansion of the markets for china and latin america to get a better performance and they also mentioned that they will create an action plan new distribution channels that need to be explored all following by the insights that we gain from this Lumira 2.0 designer dashboard application. Looking to the application itself, over here you see the landing screen. I have a home button that I can click, which always brings me back to this page. I can print everything. I can export my data at any moment so that I can uh, provide it to a data analyst. I can, uh, over here I have some elements that I can used to interact so i can at any moment in time the different filters that you can set up i can clear them i can open a specific website that i've aligned we will look at some interactivity screens as you can see over here i can click a specific continent so if i'm interested for example in americas the following is going to happen you will see that all the kpis automatically are adjusted for the americas right now also coming up in the screen are color coded arrow indicators that compare the current performance with the performance of the previous month so in case of americas the forecast accuracy went down compared to the previous month but the budget performance went up as was the margin and the units performed. You will also see over here that my absolute KPIs are adjusted. And again, I can click another continent to see the impact for those ones. I can also click a specific year. So if I wanna look at 2016, again, everything now is filtered. So again, my arrows are automatically adjusted as are my KPIs. There's also an additional chart coming into the screen which I can uh, click this additional chart if I hover it. It gives me the budget performance uh, figures and the forecast accuracy figures per month for 2016. And again, now I get it for 2017, which has only a few months because the year is not ended yet. If I put it back on all again, I can also go further with my interactivity at any moment in the dashboard. I can change my left interactivity panel with drop down boxes over here. Everything cascaded filters that apply. We will use them during the demonstration. And this button gives me an interactivity component for the white channel that looks at continent, country, city, manager, product and channel. Again, all cascaded, which I will show you during this demonstration. Next, I will show you a bit more detail. Imagine that I want to look as a manager to the key metrics. I just click the key metrics button. Over here are my color coded KPI tiles. And now I can use the interactivity panel that I just showed you. So 
let me take uh, this month interactivity panel and imagine over here you see all my KPIs, sales, sales last year, the difference between this year's sales and last year's uh, sales, budget performance, budget performance previous year. Well, I'm not going to mention them all, them all but you see all the elements over here as some of them are again color coded by thresholds that I set. If I tick 2016, for example, and I say I'd like to have a look only at quarter two, you see already the charge adjusting automatically. So I selected quarter two. And if I now look at the month, you see this is cascading filtering because now only month four, five and six appear uh, for quarter two, because that's the only month that uh, appear in that quarter. So we can now have a look further over here. You see the charge adjusting. Again, I put them back on all quarters and uh, or all month. And on the right hand side, you can see the performance for the different indicators. This in the top graph indicating the budget performance with a rolling average. Over here, you see the forecast accuracy performance during time. Uh, for the selection I made. Over here you see the unit sold versus target and over here you see the returns going down. Let me reset the filters back to the original state and we will have a look at um, other elements of the dashboard. Going to the next page, again I can go back via my home button. I can also use these page toggle boxes the next page over here shows a split between, again, the most important KPIs, budget performance, forecast accuracy, and unit sold performance. This um, overview gives some other features of uh, the product. I can click a name over here. I see the performance ranked for the different uh, sales account managers. I can click a name and you will see that all the graphs automatically adjust. I can do the same for a certain city. So if I unclick this again and say, well, I want to only have a look at France, for example, I can do that or use the interactive panel, depending on your needs, or I can also have a look at the different cities. The bigger part of the screens shows uh, nine tiles uh, split per product group showing the evolution between the different month of the forecast accuracy and the budget performance. I can tick one of the tiles, then it will automatically zoom in. So over here you can see the zoom selection. I can again uh, choose a certain year, for example, to uh, get a closer look on what is happening for this situation. Here it's coming up and here you can see that we have a, a relatively bad situation because budget performance is going down in 2016 for each product year by uh, month by month by month by month. One of the strong points that I've done over here, this is based upon a difference from extended calculation that I created in discovery that is perfectly reusable in design. Clicking the tiles again makes it uh, smaller. We go to the next page. This next page shows you some other interesting features of Lumira 2.0 designer. You see over here a ranking, an overview of the sales and budget figures per product line. Um, there's interactivity built in so the user can change any type of graph that he or she prefers. For example, a column chart uh, which gives this overview. Um, and over here you see more details per, this is a split per month. Over here you see the trending indicators per uh, responsible manager. And over here you see a comparison between what the target lines the forecasted and the actual numbers. If I click one of the products, you will see that it automatically drills down. And uh, again, my two other, other charts are drilling with me. Going to the next page, going to the next page, we see the ranking overviews. So uh, over here, two top indicators ranking the best performers based upon the metrics budgeting performance. And the bottom two are uh, showing the worst ones. Interesting over here is that you can click again and it automatically toggles into another view. So I just had the ranking for the account managers. Now I have the ranking for the products. 
And over here, I have the wanking per city, the best cities. And if I click that, I have the wanking of the best day in the week. So as you can see over here, day two uh, is a better day in average performance, for example, than day seven being the Sunday. Below, you see the same for the worst. Again, you can click it and it automatically toggles the attributes being used. Again, at any moment in time, I can say that I want to look at a specific continent or whatsoever and interact with my data. So the filters apply to every visualization you see over here. This one is also quite interesting. This is an overview of the, the evolution per month in terms of uh, performance. So this is a uh, proof that any extended calculation used in discovery can with the interoperability functionality being we use. So we see that month eight is a month that went down with almost percent compared to the performance in month seven. Yeah, so we see over here perfectly how per month the performance of the company uh, is evoluting. Cost chart um, interactivity is uh, created in here. So if I take hi-fi systems, for example, and have a look at the right hand side, you will see the moment that I take that, my charts are automatically adjusted. If I control click PCs, I have now two uh, areas selected or three. Well, the same goes for the bottom line. Clicking somewhere next to the chart, deselects everything again. So now I have again my original view. Again, like said, at any moment in time, I can apply one of these filters or choose for one of the interactive ones or having a look at a specific time. So the flexibility is very, very strong. We go to the next page. And over here, I have an example of a insight of uh, various data sources blended together. So in my original data set, I had my budget performance. What I've done in the discovery element, I added additional data in a separate data set that looked at market growth. And for example, also the, the growth of the population of a certain country. I have this data on a complete other granularity being country and year. That is everything. So not a more detailed level. And I have to compare that with the data that is even on date level that we've seen so far. Over here, you see that I've blended that data in discovery and easily we use it in designer. So over here you see various data sets compared and I can easily see, for example, that countries with a very high market growth, for example, China or for example, Argentina are in combined with their budget performance data. Similar was done on the geograph over here where you see different layers I can easily zoom in and I've indicated uh, per country how the market growth was done and the little dots indicate the budget performance ratio for that's those countries. Going to the next page where we can see the following quite interesting personally I believe is that we again used the discovery module to create some animated charts. And again, this is a combination of blended data. So I have over here my budget performance data that I took from my original data sources. And I combine that in this case with uh, the below hand side with the digital adoption weight and the top graph is the combination of budget performance with external data regarding the market growth. I can just tick the animation. I use the background that is color coded. So anything that is on the top left hand side, meaning a very high market growth and a relatively low budget performance, these are countries that are of interest to me because I want to increase their budget performance. I know that the market growth is high, so I want to focus on those countries. Over here, you can see the animation going through the different years. I can stop it at any moment in time, or I can just drag the slider to the year 
that is of interest to me, for example, 2017. And then you can see that for this year, especially Chile and Japan and Russia are markets of interest to me. If I look at the budget performance versus the digital adoption weight, these three countries, again with Russia, are the ones that are of interest to me. On the right hand side, you see a funnel chart where I can easily change the measure and have a look at how the ranking is over the various countries. So if I look, for example, at the population growth, then you see that Mexico is the absolute number one. And I might be interested to combine that, seeing where Mexico is also relatively high in the market growth. So that's definitely an area for me of expansion of my products. Next slides are two interactive geo charts which again indicate the relatively budget performance uh, over here with various layers with also market growth indicators. The next page is a page that provides one of the uh, tremendous new features of Lumira 2.0 Designer. You can provide your end user with interactivity to change their graphs or the layout of the graphs. So over here, I just made a sample graph. And for example, if uh, your end user now clicks on the forecast accuracy and wants to assign that to another uh, axis, that can easily be done or put it as a line over here, as you can see. You can also toggle with uh, the color codes and change those. And on the right hand side, my end user can change any properties that he or she sees in the graph and wants it to change. For example, the marker over here, me as an end user, I can easily change that or the bar chart or whatsoever. I have uh, full control on what I want to do with my graph. The next page is uh, very interesting for those people who consider using Lumira 2.0 designer applications on other devices with different screen sizes. Over here, you see that I have activated the new possibility for adaptive layout. I just created four charts in a row. And if I now make my screen smaller, for example, like here, let me take away this one. If I make my screen smaller and I now start to even make it a bit smaller, you will see that the graphs now are automatically below each other and adjusted to the needs that I uh, have, you see. So they will always display correctly on your device, whatever you're using and how I change the screen. So adaptive layout, very interesting for you. Going back to my home screen, some other interactivity that I'd like to show you. If I tick this button, I can uh, open a self-service application. As you probably know, Lumira 2.0 Designer comes with a number of self-service templates and a very strong use case for interoperability is that you can reuse the stories that you created in your discovery within your self-service template. So if I click this button, my self-service application opens again with the same layout as I defined and I can simply start playing with my data. So let's have a look at these metrics over here and say, well, I want to have a look at it per city and maybe split it out per product. For the products, I'd like to filter my members only to these ones and make the selection. I can set up or disable the subtotals. I can say I want to have a combination of a graph and a chart. And at any moment in time, I can make a bootmark so that I can see this information back later on. I can also do a drill down. So if I want to drill down to, for example, specific weeks, over here, you see the specific weeks coming up and I can again toggle and play with the data. Very powerful. And again, proof that you can really reuse anything that you initially created with discovery into, into Lumira 2.0 designer. Many thanks for your attention.